What's up, guys? I have to excuse the exhaust fan. Today I'm going to be doing a, a, a bone colored 1.5 square bill with a little bit of pink veining. So I've already uh, put a white base coat on these. As I've said before, um, white always brings out the natural color um, of whatever color you put on top of it. I'm just going to start off by painting this pink. You'll notice I'm just trying to build up the color to get it where I want it. Start off kind of light and then kind of build from there. This pink to be pretty bold because it's just going to be the vein in it showing up. that this is dried really well. And I'm basically just using a, a just a cheap hair dryer I bought. So I'll go ahead and finish drying this and then I'll be right back. So with this 1.5 um, I went with a base of white and then some fluorescent pink and I'm going to actually um, do a bone white over this with a pink veining so generally what I'll do if I'm doing uh, veining is I'll use a material like this um, this is pretty this is nothing new man this is a pretty old trick um, but for you newbies this material is called a uh, tool t-u-l-e and you can get it at most fabric stores and then <clears throat> I'm going to wrap it around here make it tight and then I'll spray my white over it and then when I pull it off you'll see the pink or the veining underneath it. Now depending on how I'm painting these will determine of whether I'm going to put the, the clips on the top or the bottom. Um, I generally prefer to put my clips on the top and the reason why is because if I scratch this top or whatever with one of the, putting these clips on or whatever it doesn't really matter because generally I'm going to come back and paint over this top anyway um, you know whether it be a different color with this one I'll probably leave it white but I'll just do a touch up with the with the white um, so I'll be going on top so again you just want to there's really no rhyme or reason to the pattern and you just want to try to get it as, uh, as tight around here as you can I like to really just start off on this bill and I'll clamp it down like that to begin with. And again, I'm 
trying to get this as tight as I can. I hope y'all can see this pretty good with this angle. Um, I also find that the more clips that you can put on here, the better, better off you'll be. So make sure any eyes you have on here, whatever, um, that you poke them through the material. Um, and again, the more clips you use, the tighter this is going to be. Um, even though you're going to come back and, you know, probably touch this top up where these are going to be, um, I always try to be really careful. The less touch-up work you have to do, the better off you'll be. And sometimes this, this thin tool stuff will try to, to split on you. Um, these are just little alligator clips that I bought at one of the local hobby stores. They come in various shapes and sizes. I think I've gotten a couple of packs of these from like Harbor Freight, really cheap. And they'll be like in the um, electrical department for the wiring and all. And again, this is all pretty basic stuff here. Um, if you want more veining, um, you know, depending on what you want, you can actually double this fabric up, and uh, and it'll cover more if you double it up before you put it on there. Basically, just fold it to double it up. I'm just going for very subtle veining. different sizes, some bigger clips, some smaller clips. Um, like I said, the more clips you can put on here, the better off you'll be. Just tightens it down more. And you can see all this will be covered. Um, now with that being said, as you spray, um, you don't want to go too high with your air pressure because what will happen if you do that then you'll spray up under this fabric and you're really trying to avoid that. Um, sometimes um, I'll even take these and put an intra coat on there before I do this if I'm worried about scratching it. Um, but with this one I'm really not worried about scratching it. Um, because I feel like I'm going to paint over where these are anyway, so I really don't care. So anyway, that's the wrapping part of it. So the next thing I'm going to do after I have this on, um, I use this style, style res or steno res or whatever they call it that I get from Badger. And it's basically, a, a, this is it. And it's basically um, the base coat that I use, the white base coat. Um, and it's acrylic, polyurethane. And the reason why I'm going to spray this on here is because, depending on what colors, because I'm going to do a bone white. And what's going to happen is if I just spray that bone white on this, this pink, or if you have a darker color, it'll bleed through like white. Obviously, if I was painting it black or something, I wouldn't worry about it because I'm doing a lighter color on top of this. You always want to go ahead and uh, do another base coat of this, and um, and that's going to block it out and keep the keep the paint from bleeding through. Again, I got my air pressure down around probably 5 PSI. It's 
doesn't really have to be perfect. Try to do this as straight on as you possibly can so you're not getting any angles to spray it up under there. And you'll see I'm not using a lot of air pressure here. And I'm trying to cover what pink that I can so it doesn't bleed through when I come back with my bone white. Try to get as much as I can on the top, but like I stated before, I am going to come back and paint over that again anyway. your base coat and it's really hard to tell the difference between that and the bone white you see that the bone white will have a little bit more of a yellowish tint than that um, so I'll let this dry and then come back with the bone white all right so now that I went and I've kind of dried this clear coat you can still see there's still some pink coming through but it definitely won't be as bad with this. And you can see that this bone has a little bit more yellow of a tint to it. technique with just about any color you want to. And then I'll let that dry and then I'll rip off the, the fabric. Alright, so this is pretty much dried and just to let you know and I do use an a old hair dryer to kind of speed up the drying process. So now I'm going to carefully take these clips off. Like I said, you're trying not to, to do the best you can to try not to scratch anything. See, there's the white with the pink veining. Now you can see where the top, it didn't get the top as good. Some people like to leave it like that. But what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to spray over the top of that. Um, I mainly want the, the veining on the bottom and the side of the bait. So I'm going to just come back really quick and just... this dry I'll probably let it actually dry overnight then I'll come back and I'll darken in the eyes with black 
Um, who knows, I may even add a little pink accent in there, or I may just leave it alone. But at this point, I'll let this dry. I'll blacken in the eyes. I'll let that dry. I'll put my initial on the bottom. Um, I'll actually apply the eyes, and then I'll clear coat it. And we'll come back to that. So I always spray black around my eyes pretty much no matter what color I use. Um, I'll spray it in the eye socket and just barely let it um, overspray around the eye. And what that does is once you put the eye in there with that little bit of black around it, it'll set that eye off. this dry or dry it with a hair dryer and then I'll place my eyes um, I'll initial at the bottom put my initials on it um, then I'll take this off this tape off um, and I'll clear cut it all right so I got the eyes blackened in and this is how I go about putting the eyes on um, so usually 1.5 uh, takes a five millimeter eyes. You know, they always vary and you gotta kind of check them out. Um, so the way I do it is I like to hold them in place with a little bit of super glue. Now mind you, um, once that clear coat goes on, that's gonna hold them. But I like this super glue um, just to kind of help out I use a Loctite. I like the gel because it's easier to control. And I also use a toothpick um, because what happens if you just try to dab it on with this, it'll put too much on there. And then when you go to push that eye on, that uh, glue will squish out from under it and make a mess and ruin your bait. So I just take just a little bit of how well you can see it on the camera. But I mean, it's, it's just a tad. And I'm going to just kind of touch it on this eye. And these particular blanks, for whatever reason, this eye socket is not um, completely round. And notice I'm still doing this with gloves because I don't want to touch my bait. Um, and I'm using a cat eye on these, so it's kind of important to make sure you got that kind of straight up and down. And then I use one of these like little round tip stylus if I need to, to kind of position it and move it around a little bit. And there you have it, and that glue will dry. And then, um, and you can see how that black around the edges really makes that eye pop. And then if something happens like this is not completely round with that black in there, you really can't see it. If I would have left that white and put that black, you would see a gap in between that eye and sometimes by painting them black you can actually get away if you don't have the eye you want to you can actually get out and get away with a little bit smaller of an eye um so you try to get these pupils as straight as you can on here especially like these split eyes um but the thing thing about these lures is <laughs> most people can't look at the same 
side at the same time, so I'm only seeing one side at a time, so something's a little off. They don't really notice it. And some people have placed these eyes, you know, with a with a blade. Uh, some people have used a toothpick. I try to use my fingers. See, this one's tilted a little bit further back than that other one was, so I'm going to position it with this. Now you can see, I don't know if you can see, but those are pretty close if you can see the pupils on them. The way they kind of go there. But anyway, that's how I put my eyes on. Um, and that's why I blacken them out. You can really see it, it makes them pop. Um, the next thing, really the only other thing I'm going to do to this bait is like I told you earlier is I'm going to sign my name on the bottom. I'm going to take this tape off and I'll clean the bait up a little bit, clean that bill up because the bill will be clear. <coughs> and I also like to clear coat my bills to help them stay durable. And when I get a finished product, I'll let you see. So there's a finished product. That's a fluorescent pink. You can see I put my initial in the, the year on there. And that's the fluorescent pink and veining with the bone color. See how the eyes turned out and everything. Um, I put the KVD treble hooks on there. It's the ones I like. They're a short shank. But anyway, that's it. I did use Alumalite uh, UV to clear it. I have used KBS, but I like Alumalite better. Anyway, that's it.